Welcome to example nine. We have a collision between two objects. It's on an air hockey table. And the reason why I'm putting it on an air hockey table is so that we don't have any external forces like friction acting on the system. So we can use conservation of momentum. Uh, we have puck A, larger puck here, with mass. Uh, do we have that mass? Oh, yes. It's the same mass as B. So even though they look like they're different objects, they have the same uh, mass, 0.2 kilograms. Um, a is coming along, and it hits B, and B's off-center. So this is what we call a glancing collision. So what we're trying to do is to figure out uh, V, B, final. And we know the final velocity of A and the angle. We also need to find the angle that B leaves at. So uh, this is a conservation of momentum. And I'm going to first show you what we call the component method. And then we'll take a look at that second way afterwards. Uh, it's up to you how you do it. So the diagram's been drawn. You pick an X and Y coordinate system. You show the, the objects and as they come towards each other, and then a collision after the collision and where they're going afterwards. So let's go to part A here, and we're going to apply the conservation of momentum in the X direction. Okay, so momentum initially in the X direction equals momentum finally in the X direction. And so the momentum initially in the X direction would be the mass of A times the velocity of A initially in the X direction plus the mass of B times the velocity of B initially in the X direction. And that's equal to the mass of A times the velocity of A finally in the X direction plus the mass of B times the velocity of B finally in the X direction. So now, um, since mass A and mass B are the same, that's going to simplify our problem. We can cancel all these masses because that's what's shown here. So therefore, you have velocity of A initially in the X direction. Now, the way we've defined our coordinate system, A is moving completely horizontal. So really, this velocity is the velocity of A initially also in the X direction. And the velocity of A initially in the Y direction would be 0, because it's not moving up. It's moving completely horizontal. So we can put in a 4 here. Velocity B initial is zero. So therefore, there is no velocity. So it's four plus zero equals velocity A final, we're given is two. Now be careful, that's two in that direction. So we want the x component of that velocity. So recall that if this is velocity A final, we want this velocity, velocity A final, in the x direction, and this angle is 60 degrees. So, and this would be velocity A final in the Y direction. So what trig ratio would we use to find this side, which is the adjacent side, in terms of the, and also the hypotenuse, which is given as 2. So you have 60 degrees. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Hopefully you'll realize that's a cosine of 60 degrees. So velocity A final in the X direction is velocity A final times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is actually 2 times cos 60. So we have 2 times cosine of 60 degrees, plus we have velocity B final. Now we don't know that information, so but we should write it in terms of theta that we're looking for and in terms of this velocity B final. We're not looking for the x, we're looking for the velocity B final as a resultant. But again, remember, if this is velocity B final, and if we're looking for velocity B final in the x direction, and this is theta, over here would be velocity B final in the y direction, we would use the cosine once again. So that's going to be velocity B final times the cosine of theta. And both of these things we don't know, but we'll put them in here. Velocity B final times cosine theta. So as you can see, we have two unknowns, the velocity of B and the angle theta. So let's simplify this equation to write t 4 t equals 2 times cosine 60. Now the cosine 60 is a half, so this is really 1, plus VB final times the cosine of theta. So velocity B final times cosine theta is equal to 3. So there's one equation right here, which we will need to find a second equation to find out this velocity B and, the, and the, also the angle. And that's going to come from the momentum in the y direction. So the momentum um, initially in the y direction equals the momentum finally in the y direction. So again, we could write our whole expression out. Mass A, velocity A initially in the y, mass B 
velocity b initially in the y equals mass a velocity a finally in the y plus mass b velocity b finally in the y direction. And again, you can cancel out your masses because they have the same mass in this problem. And remember, going back to here, velocity a is completely horizontal. So velocity a initially is 0. Velocity b is at rest, so that means also that's 0. Okay, And then you have velocity a final. Now going back to over here, velocity a final would use the sine of 6 degrees. So velocity a final is velocity a final times the sine of 60. So let's sub that in. So velocity a final times the sine of 60 degrees. And then over here, velocity b final will be velocity b final times the sine of theta. Actually, we should have put in here velocity a final is actually 2. So let's do that. So we then we get 0 equals. Now, oh, there's a little mistake that you may notice here. This component here is negative. Remember, this is going down. So that sign should be negative. And I've just made the typical student mistake here. 2 times sine 60. Now, sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So that's 2 times root 3 over 2 minus velocity b final sine theta. So let's rearrange that. You've got root 3 equals velocity b final times the sine of theta. And let's put a box around that. So there's our two equations, one here, one here. And maybe you remember that sine theta over cosine, cosine theta is tan theta. So let's call this equation 1. And this is equation 2. And what we're going to do is now take 1 and divide it by 2. So velocity b final sine theta all over velocity a or whoops b final cosine theta equals root 3 over 3. Velocity b finals cancel out, but we get tan theta equals root 3 over 3. And so theta is the arctan of root 3 over 3, which gives you 30 degrees. Exactly. And that's 30 degrees below the horizontal. Now, I suppose if you had left this as a positive here, and then you had a negative root 3 over 3, then you would get an angle of theta that is negative. And that's okay. Okay. Uh, last part is to figure out the velocity of b final. So substitute this angle into any one of the equations. I'll sub it back into equation number 2. 3 equals velocity b final times the cosine of 30 degrees. So velocity b final would be 3 divided by cosine 30, which turns out to be exactly 3 over root 3 over 2, because that's what cosine 30 is. Or we can round that to 3.46 meters per second. And so there's our answer for the velocity b final. So that's one way to solve the problem uh, for part a. And the second part of the question is asking you whether the collision is elastic. So let's go ahead and solve part b. We'll just put that over here. And we want to know whether it's an elastic collision. So what's the test to see if something is elastic? The test, if you recall, is does the kinetic energy initial of the system initially, is that equal to the kinetic energy of the system afterwards? So what we need to do is compute the individual kinetic energy. We have kinetic energy initially, which is 1 half mass 1, velocity 1 initially squared, plus 1 half mass 2, velocity 2 initially squared. And so let's substitute those numbers in. You have 1 half times that mass, which is 0.2 kilograms times the velocity 1 initially was 3, I believe, meters per second. No, actually I was wrong. That's 4 meters per second up here. So let's put in a 4 quantity squared plus 1 half times mass 2, again 0.2. But velocity 2 initially was 0 squared. So this term goes to 0. And so what we get initially for kinetic energy is 1.6 joules. And so now let's compute the kinetic energy finally. 
and we'll have one half m1 v1 final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared and let's substitute those numbers in and we have one half times 0.2 times the final velocity of a afterwards was two squared plus one half times 0.2 times velocity b final we found was um, 3.46 or if you want to be exact, it will be 6 over root 3 quantity squared. And so go ahead and compute that, and you get 1.6 joules. Oh, wow, they're the same. So if the kinetic energy finally and initially are the same, then what do we have? It's an elastic collision. Okay, so that's it for this example. Now, I could solve this using um, a vector triangular method, but I'll show you that in the next problem. So let's move on. Okay.